Decide who you're going to be. You should ignore what other people are doing. Don't compare yourself to other people. You're focused on your own internal progress. That's what matters. At the end of the year, everyone thinks about how the year went and how they want the new year to go better. What they're really talking about is better habits. I'm Ryan Holiday. I've been writing about stoicism now for almost 15 years. I've spoken about it to everyone from the NFL, to sitting US senators and special forces operators. And I, of course, try to practice the philosophy in my own life. I try to be productive. I try to be a good person, I try to be a good parent, I try to be present, I try not to be addicted to my device. All of this is about habit. So in today's video, I want to talk about better habits to create, hopefully, a new you. The first place to start is the idea of thinking really, really small. Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, says, well-being is realized by small steps, but it's no small thing. Right? You don't promise yourself that you're gonna read more. You decide you're gonna read like a page a day. You don't decide that you're gonna transform your diet or your exercise, like you start going for a walk, right? Make a small decision and then you build on it. I love James Clear's book, uh, Atomic Habits. Um, I got to see him put this book together. We go way back. Um, we sell this book at my bookstore, The Painted Porch. But I think the idea of Atomic Habits is like, as the subtitle says, tiny changes, remarkable results. But even think about what an atomic, what it means to say an atomic habit. It's not just explosive, like an atom is the smallest possible building block you can think of. So when we think about habits, let's start really, really small. Don't lie to yourself, don't get ahead of yourself. Just think of the smallest thing you can start with. Join a program. Look, there's a reason that Alcoholics Anonymous and programs like that have helped so many people. Also, like weight loss boot camps or whatever. Programs work because it's about handing over control, right? When you were in control, it wasn't working. So you're handing over control to someone or something else. One way to have better habits this year, one way to move forward would be to find some sort of program or challenge that pushes you out of your comfort zone that you cede control to and you let it boss you around a little bit. We have to decide who we're gonna be. What kind of identity are you gonna have for yourself this year? Do you see yourself as lazy? Or do you see yourself as a hardworking person, an honest person? Decide who you're gonna be, because this identity is gonna be really important as far as the individual decisions you make. I don't know if you saw that Taylor Swift documentary that came out on Netflix, but she's talking about some of her struggles with like the eating disorder or body image issues. And she talks about how she saw this picture of herself that um, made herself feel really uncomfortable and she didn't like it and she was about to judge herself and maybe go down the spiral. And then she said to herself, no, we don't do that anymore, right? She identified with like a version of herself that doesn't do that to herself anymore. And I love that. So who are you gonna be this year that's gonna allow you to say, no, I don't do that anymore? Or yeah, I am the kind of person that gets up early and goes for a run. I am a person who doesn't lose my temper around my family, right? What are you gonna identify with? This is gonna be really important for your habits. I think it's impossible to have good habits without a routine. So you have to develop and build a routine. For me, I wake up early, I take my kids outside, we run or we go on a walk. One of my rules, I don't touch my phone for the first one hour that I'm awake. I journal in the morning. Then one of my big habits is I tackle my, my big creative project first. I don't get sucked into email first. I don't have a meeting first. I don't watch TV first. I tackle the big creative project first. Again, that's one of the things I identify with, that I own the morning. I'm a morning person. I tackle the morning. I kick the shit out of the morning. I am successful in the morning. That wasn't just naturally who I was. This is something I had to develop and build. Seneca says that life without design is erratic. Build a routine and stick to it. Lay out your supplies, get your stuff ready. If you're just winging it, or if you have to do a lot of setup each time, you're gonna be less likely to do that thing. So if you wanna be a runner, lay out your running clothes in the morning, put out your running shoes. Um, if you wanna be a journaler, put a journal in a place that you can't miss it. 
So lay out your supplies, find a way to grease the wheels of the habit that you're struggling with or the change that you're trying to make or the person you're trying to be so you're not jammed up. You're not like, oh, it's gonna be so hard. I'm just gonna go order food from McDonald's or whatever, right? Lay out your stuff or oh, I'd have to go back upstairs and get my stuff. No, make it so you have to step over the running shoes. You have to violate your identity to not do it as opposed to going with it. Who do you associate with? Studies show like if you have unhealthy friends, you're gonna be unhealthy. Uh, if you have uh, ambitious friends, you're gonna be ambitious. My father said this to me as a kid. He said, Ryan, you become like your friends. So associate with people that make you better. If you dwell with a lame man, was the old expression, you will learn how to limp. So who do you surround yourself with? Who is your peer group? We have the Daily Silk Life community, by the way, which I'd love to have you join. It's like a private Facebook group. You get extra emails, you get Q and A's with me. But the idea is who's your community? In the ancient world, the Stoics had the Scipionic Circle, a group of Stoics who would get together and have dinner parties and events and debate philosophy and read books and share with each other. Even the relationship between Seneca and Lucilius, which we get in Seneca's letters of a Stoic, it's them talking to each other. He says, we learn as we teach. By, by having this peer group, they both get better. So who are you spending time with this year? I think habits are also a muscle, right? Are you building the muscle of forming or breaking habits? Sometimes just for the fun of it. My wife was always complaining that she didn't like how I chomped when I chewed gum. And I just realized like, okay, I kind of like chewing gum. It's like a nervous way to expend some energy. It tastes good or whatever. It's not like good for health or it's not positive in any way. It's bothering this person. Can I just quit this? And I'd probably chew gum every day of my life for a decade and a half. What are the things that you can think about quitting? How can you flex this muscle? Show yourself that you're in charge. Build the muscle that you're someone who can start a habit, that you can quit a habit. Try to develop this muscle, like at a meta level, can you cultivate the ability to form and break habits? I think this is really important. One foundational habit for, for next year, I think would be free up precious resources. People say, oh, I don't have time, but pull up the screen time app on your phone. You have time. You just choose to spend it on things that don't matter. You watch too much news, you spend too much time doom scrolling. You say you don't have time, but here you are watching this video. We spend too much time on things that don't matter. One of the best habits changes I've made is sort of winnowing my worldview. Of course, it, you have to know what's going on in the world, but you don't have to obsess about it in real time. You don't have to consume things that make you feel crappy or awful or suck you into the, this uh, catastrophizing mindset. Right? If you wish to improve, Epictetus says, you have to be willing to not know about some things. So focus on what matters, lock in time to focus on making better habits by eliminating uh, things that are sucking up too much of your time now. One thing to think about might be like some physical reminder, some sort of totem, some sort of thing that bumps you. The author and minister Will Bowen came up with this thing a couple years ago called the no complaint challenge. And the idea was you would put a bracelet on this wrist, you would try to keep it on this wrist as long as possible, but anytime you complain, you had to switch it to the other wrist. So could you go 30 days without having to move the bracelet? I've talked about this a bunch of times. I carry physical reminders with me. I have them on my desk, but you can see some of them. These are some of the things that we sell in the Daily Stoke store. But in one pocket, I keep the uh, Memento Mori coin, a sort of a reminder of the, the finiteness of life, the fragility of existence. In the other one, I keep the Four Virtues coin, courage, temperance, justice, wisdom. Those are the principles, the kind of watch words that I try to live by. And again, having a physical totem, a reminder of this is really, really helpful. Of course, one of the most important habits to me is reading. Um, and I know I talked about routine. I know I talked about consistency. I do think it's important that people figure out a way to do something that works for them. So some people that's gonna be, I read 20 pages a day. Me, I tend to be more of a binge reader. Sometimes I'm reading nothing, sometimes I'm reading a lot, but that's what works for me. I'd rather read five books in a week and then not read for a week than try to average that out. That's just how it works for me. Sometimes people go, well, what's the best way to do this? Or what's the best way to do that? The truth is the best way is the way that 
gets you to do it, that works for you. So you, you should tune out what other people are doing. You should ignore what other people are doing. Don't compare yourself to other people. You're focused on your own internal progress. That's what matters. We always tell ourselves, this year, it's gonna be different. I'm gonna change. And then come uh, another 12 months and we haven't changed as much as we liked. The truth is we're not perfect. Change is never as rapid or as transformative as we'd like it to be. And slipping and tripping are gonna be inevitable. Mark Cerulli says, when you're jarred by circumstances, like revert to yourself. He says, don't lose the rhythm more than you can help it. You gotta come back to it. We're gonna mess up. But what matters is that we pick ourselves up when we fail and we celebrate, as Mark Cerulli says, being a human, but that we try to become a better one. So come back to the habits that you're working on. Uh, expect that there's gonna be stumbles along the way. Don't quit just because you're not perfect. Come back to the ideas in this post. Come back to the, the goals you set for yourself. And if you get a little better in 2022 and you're lucky enough to be here in 2023 and you get a little bit better, right? Those changes are cumulative. They compound on each other. Don't put it off. Struggle with it, but get better because you are struggling with it. That's what stoicism is about. To me, that's what New Year's resolutions are about. And uh, I'm wishing you a great new year and hopefully a new you as well. Every day now for five years, I have written an email about stoicism. It's been a wonderful experience sharing with all of you. And if you haven't signed up, I would love to have you join us. It's the largest community of Stoics, not just in the world right now, but I think ever before in history. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash daily email. It's totally free, no spam. You can unsubscribe whenever you want, but I'd love to have you join us and I'd love for you to be on this journey with me.